So that'll point at me. Tell me if you frame appropriately. Good? You're good. How's everybody doing today? Good. My name's Carter Rethwish. Some of you may have seen me or heard of the Cardinal Cowboy. Any any Cardinal fans? I can usually start off with that. <laughs> we got some Cardinal fans around here. Um, does anybody familiar with Cardinal Cowboy? No. Some people are. Some people aren't. Um, I was voted Major League Baseball's favorite fan, one of 21 super fans in the world, all kinds of fun things. Uh, but the reason I started doing this, I think, is part of the reason Jim wanted to have me come up here. Um, I was on my way. A lot of people thought I was going to make it as a baseball player. Some people did. Some people didn't. You never know what you're going to make it. Right? I won the same award as a guy by the name of David Fries. Anybody remember David Fries? Yeah. Yeah. Did some magical stuff back in 2011. That was kind of an exciting one. But he's, he went to Lafayette. Um, Ryan Howard also played in the same league, and, and the, we all played it. I won the Slava team MVP. They both won the team MVP. They, they also then won the uh, league MVP. But I was up against a guy named Brian Ruff. So probably, many people remember Brian Ruff. But he, he now is double-A manager for the Washington Nationals, and he got stuck at third base for the AAA Cardinals. He's got to beat me out. A few other guys, he, he beat us out. For the, to beat the title, but he he got stuck behind third base, but behind a guy named Scott Rowland. Anybody remember Scott Rowland? Uh, All right, so a lot of fun there. But my my path was changed a little bit because uh, of, of a particular happenstance, a particular accident that happened. I transferred from St. Louis University to Central Methodist College, Central Methodist University. Now anybody familiar with Central Methodist? <laughs> And they got a decent, good little baseball program there. I knew the coach, and he'd gotten a number of guys drafted. They get a couple guys drafted every year out of uh, Central Methodist. So I transferred there to play um, baseball. Uh, I knew the soccer coach, and I played soccer in high school. We went to the state championship a couple times. I scored a sudden death overtime goal. That was kind of exciting. Uh, put us in the state championship. But I went there to play uh, baseball. Played, decided to play soccer. We decided then to go visit. Like, I was going to come back to St. Louis. <clears throat> Central Methodist is about a two-hour drive <clears throat> from uh, St. Louis. We're going to come back, and the gal I'd been dating, she was coming down from Bradley. We'd been dating for a few months, and, and we we're going to meet in St. Louis. Uh, my buddies who were driving the car, though, um, were going to go to the Eureka High School soccer game, where Jimmy Weatherly had graduated and was our goalie at Central, and then Jimmy Barnes was his roommate, and uh, Sean Soule was in the back right seat uh, next to me. But uh, fate would have a different path. As we're going down Highway 109, people familiar with Highway 109 in Eureka, uh, a, a car was spinning out of control at us, and I'll show you some of the pictures here uh, real quick. This will give you some indication as the, to the severity. I think Jim saw, I, I did a speech over in my old high school. I went to, I went away to Lutheran South over here, right, just down the street. But um, Lutheran South, the high school I went to, so I went to, I, I'm going to go to my, uh, my, my Facebook real quick. I'm sure there's nothing there we can't show it. But uh, I don't need all that. But as I drove down the road, I was in the back seat, and um, a guy by the name Jimmy Barnes was driving, but a guy came spinning out of control and hit us. Um, and I'll show you the truck here. No, no, not really. Bear with me one second here. Was that in front of the high school? This was at. Uh, this was at uh, Highway 109 by the Eureka High School. That's what I mean. Right, yeah, by the Eureka High School. So, if you go here, I'm going to scroll down and get to my pictures. This is, and so I've got all kinds of stuff filming out here, but. Eh. Bear with me, I apologize here. I put these on, so I was organizing organizing these pictures yesterday, so we get all kinds of stuff with Facebook, right? And you get cluttered with all kinds of things. But I uh, decided to organize these in one place I could easily get to them, right? There it is. <laughs> all right, there it is. Took a minute. So I put these out yesterday and it had a bunch of people that were like, whoa, I never even knew. So here's the car we were riding in. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's Jimmy Barnes' car. That's the dash area. Here's the article that my parents snapped out of the paper. It talked about the uh, guy who hit us was drunk. He blew a .21. 
if you imagine what a point, now the legal limit is 0.08, right? the legal limit used to be 0.10 at the time he did this. Well, he was double the legal limit at the time. So my sister and I, we both graduated on time. There's Jimmy Barnes, and he died at the accident. Uh, he actually died in hospital a couple days later, but his head swelled. By now they talk about how they, they will actually penetrate your brain, your, your skull, to allow the pressure. That's something they used to do back at that time, and Jimmy... <clears throat> I scored a uh, high school, in college, I scored the only goal at that point during the season they talk about in the article here, uh, Central. That's my high school picture. That's Lutheran South right up here where I went. And then that's me as a kid. Um, how many people grew up as baseball fans, right? Especially because of the St. Louis Cardinals. And that's really where I start to talk about the fact that baseball effectively, in my, in my estimation, helped save my life. Because as the accident happened, they, they, they came to the scene of the accident, it was close to the Eureka High School Fire Department. Thanks again for what you guys do. It makes me well up just thinking about it. But um, the, the ambulance was pretty close, pretty quickly it was there. And they had taken Jimmy Barnes out and put him in uh, the first ambulance because he was in really bad shape. Jimmy Weatherly, I believe, also was there. And then they, as a matter of just getting people in, I was okay, apparently, according to what they originally, the original assessment, but, um, and so they put the drunk driver who had hit us and put him in also as a matter of just getting the first ambulance ready to go and, and take off. So they're having a conversation with me, and naturally I don't remember any of this. This is a built-in defense mechanism, right? But um, I started to have seizures at the scene while I was talking to him. My jaw was broken. I still, when I think about it, I, I don't think about it very often, but the nerves here are still kind of severed and I can't feel it. I joke with a girl if I'm eating dinner with her, I say, now if I start to drool, you gotta tell me. I can't feel anything right here. But, um, but I was having that conversation with somebody and then went into seizures. They stopped the first ambulance. They said, stop, put Carter in, pull the drunk driver out. His name's on there. I won't even give him any credit. But he, uh, they pulled him out, put me in, and they said if I hadn't made that first trip, thanks again, man, it saved my life. If I hadn't made that first trip, I would not have survived. I proceeded. <clears throat> There's the first high school picture my dad took. That one, I don't look much different, Jeff. But uh, <laughs> that's a picture of the first time we have a picture of me wearing the, the Augie Bush <coughs> red cowboy hat. But proceeded to the hospital, um, went into, they shot me up with a drug called Dilantin, which I think they've gone away from. But that can stop seizures. Um, I talked to another paramedic. He said, if you're going to go into a coma, you were going into a coma. Dilantin didn't have anything to do with it. But... Um, went into a coma, at which point they told my parents, and so naturally they do the call, my dad says, my dad's a fairly well-informed guy, and he says, I know what they can't tell me, right? But I can ask them what they and I can do. He said, can I see my son? And when the answer was no, he knew it was pretty severe. So they told my parents later on, they drove back, they were, had driven down to see me play soccer and, and for homecoming that weekend, and we turned around and came back to St. Louis, so I was glad to see you. And they, but they came behind us. Got the call, the neighbor across the street was a state trooper. He said, why don't you just follow me or ride with me after you, which happened, because they're rattled at this point. But they get to the hospital. A couple days later, they say, your son has less than 50-50 odds to survive. I didn't know that. Nobody told me I was in a coma. Thank God, right? <clears throat> but um, I, I, I'm on, strapped to the, the gurney. They, they restrain your arms so that you can't hurt yourself. And I've got a ventilator down my throat breathing for me. You know, something a hundred years ago we didn't have, and, and Dilantin even, you know, and I looked up Dilantin, they discovered it kind of used our <coughs> in the 60s. So those are all things, the new revelations, constant improvement, you know, the great American system we have here. I'm, being, I'm alive now because of that much. So I pulled my arms out of the restraints, I pulled a ventilator out of my own throat, and they say he's going to make it. And I've talked to a number of nurses since then, and, and now some of them say, yeah, that happens rarely, but it does, they've seen it happen. And it's not supposed to happen, right? Well, they, they restrain your arms for a reason, so that you can't. But I got them out because I'm so strong. Obviously, look at me. But, but, but five nine, you know, five ten, and determined. I got my arms out of those restraints, and then uh, they said, "Well, he's going to make it." Now, another thing, my parents strategically did not tell me um, until years later. Jump ahead, and they said, "Carter, actually, on the way out, when we were putting you, taking you out of the wheelchair, putting you in the car." that we're going to have to take care of you for the rest of your life. So imagine being, you know, being my mom at the time told me, 
we're just glad to have somebody to take care of. So I could go through all kinds of different parts of the story and, and the things that have kind of happened, but I, I jump ahead to a couple of exciting things. And, and so obviously, would anybody here doubt that I've kind of proved them wrong, right? And that's where the real Cardinal Cowboy message comes in. And the fact is, if you can see on the card I had on there, I hand this card out to anybody that would like one. I, I make a, a, a bit of fun of it to say, now I'm going to give you this card and I'm going to sign it. So I've signed it and you witnessed me see it, signing it in agreement. Our commitment, our, our contract here is that you're going to do what this card says. And it's good for kids in particular. And I really think sports is a, a fundamental part of life that you have to be involved with or else kids are going to miss so much about what they need to learn the tools they get from life. And baseball saved my life, literally, I believe. But if I wasn't so driven because of the athleticism yeah. and, the, and the drive I had from sports, from baseball in particular, I played soccer, I also played a little basketball, whatever, but bas primary sport was baseball. If it weren't for baseball, I wouldn't be. Weren't for Stan Musial, you saw me playing some Stan Musial videos there. Weren't for Stan Musial, who made baseball the, the sport it is here in St. Louis, I wouldn't be here. So I signed this card and I give it to kids, and I'll do a little demo here for Anybody who, 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 who would like one of the little cards, bro? I sign it. There we go. Jim, all right. Jim, there's your card. Now you have to agree to do what the card says on the front of that card, or you have to give it back to me. We have a deal? Yeah. What does the card say on the front there, Jim? It says dream and then chase your dreams. Does it, everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Dream and then chase your dreams. Because it had become clear to me that where I had great parents that really encouraged me, I was very fortunate and, and it survived what I came through, but a lot of people, everybody likes to dream, right? We dream every night. Sometimes the dreams are nightmares, but, so, but, but we have some kind of a dream. At any point in our life, we're trying to go after those dreams, and that's especially for kids, but I find adults need it too sometimes, and they need a reminder. Yes, you still can accomplish anything wherever you're at in life, but you can't just dream. You have to actually go after it. And so I sat around for about a year and a half after my accident, after being in a coma, feeling sorry for myself. Why did this happen, right? Good reason, I was near death. Um, my life had been flipped upside down, baseball career was over, could barely walk, it took about five years to completely recuperate. I could function, I could walk pretty quickly after the accident, I know they had me in a wheelchair for a little bit, but, uh, but psychologically, mentally, I had a lot going on. If you guys have seen the scar on my head, it goes across my head and goes over to here, and my jaw was broken, and like I said, but I, at a certain point, I just kind of woke up one day and I go, this sucks. I am not going to continue the rest of my life this way, feeling sorry for myself. I wasn't raised that way. I don't believe that's the way I should be. And I'm just going to go out and do whatever I can do anyway and just might have to do it a different way, find a different path, find skills that I didn't know I had or develop things that before I never developed. And so that's where the, the fundamental part of what the Cardinal Cowboy per se stands for, and it's, it's to try to encourage everybody, young, old, I visited kids in grade school, I visited kids in high school, I've talked to kids um, in college, I've talked to adults in elderly homes, and the message is pretty much the same. You have the ability at any point in your life <clears throat> to decide, I'm going for it. We have a system here in America, thank God, to our military and our fire and our police that really make it possible to give us a safe environment, and uh, a government that Generally, you know, depending where, which side, it all comes together and we make this thing happen. And there's places around the world, it's not even close to this kind of opportunity we have here. So we have a, an incredible system in place. Why not take advantage of the opportunity you have? Because what happens along the way that I found, and this is, I think somebody, it might have been, Jim texted me this earlier, but somebody, there was actually somebody made a comment. I put those pictures up and I just published them just to have them somewhere. And actually I had the opportunity to say, Make them private, make them public, or make them just for the people that were named, which my parents, my mom, and my sister, my dad. And, and I said, make it public, let people see it. I didn't even put a comment on there, didn't describe it, I just had a title for the pictures. And people, I had I know, close to 70 people liking it, and I didn't even say anything about it, but it, people see these things. And the point is that you can, see anything you do, I mean, you guys know this, right? And this is where we've got to spread the word more and more because when you're helping other, when you're doing something for yourself, you're trying to benefit and prosper yourself. Along the way, you're going to help a lot of other people. And you've got a business, or you've got a charity, or whatever. But the things you do, and, and one of the best things you can do is helping someone else, it really helps you. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that until the first 
five or seven different events I had gone to. By now I can name 200 events, 300 events. But that's just because I, I, it's like a drug. I was like, I'm addicted to helping people now. My parents say, hey, focus on your business, kids, make sure you can pay your bill. But at the same time, I mean, then the connections you make, the people you make. But really the impact, for me, it's a matter of people need to believe that they can accomplish anything they set their mind to. I was pushed to the brink of death. Doctors saying that I was not going to be able to take care of myself after I proved that I was going to survive. Don't tell me because you didn't get the promotion, your dog wet the floor. I mean, I hear these things. This is, that's a real one. That, that your life is at a crisis end and you can't get to the next level in your life. Right? So I know we're, I'm preaching to the choir here. We've got a lot of people that have done very amazing things and very successful. But there's a lot of people who don't know that and don't realize it. And we need to spread that word with them. And I think what the Qantas guys, what you guys do is incredible because it helps to facilitate through sports, right, is your focus, and the thing you do to help kids get involved in sports. And to me, am I right with that? Is that the, the, uh, we, we work with each other. Yeah, and, and not necessarily through sports. Okay, and, and that's another group I was with there was, they were focused on a playground, you know, the Qantas group, and the students. So, but, it, but helping kids, the kids are the ones who really need this more than anybody, and I believe that sports is a, is a great way to help kids do that. So, um, I'll finish up here, I don't know how much how, what time we have, but... I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. Okay, yeah. Um, the uh, recently, to just to kind of keep it in perspective, and, and, and where I, be I began to realize, or another reminder, I should say, of, of how fortunate I am uh, and blessed, I, I should say. But uh, I was I recently was uh, going to visit some kids over in Alton, Illinois. One of the fathers I know, he said, "Will you come give your little quick speech ten minutes before the game and talk to our kids about?" why sports is important and what we can do. And I did that, and I drove back to St. Louis, took pictures of it, put it on my Facebook to share it. And then I got an email from somebody that said, you've been nominated for this award. And I said, what, I, what is this, who is it? I looked them up, and I began to realize it's a pretty neat organization called the Bob Emick Group. And uh, last year, they it was the first year they did this award. But Bob uh, made a great impact and helped a lot of kids and, and sports and all that, and they, now they wanted to do an award in his name. And last year, they gave it to a gal by the name of Jackie joyner Kersey. I don't know if anybody's heard of her, but, um, but she's done fairly well in the athletic world. And this year, they nominated me, and I was like, whoa, listen, I didn't realize, okay, we're doing good things. That means we've got a lot of good things going on. We've got to keep doing them. So what I did is I decided to research for the first time since my coma what kind of situation I was really dealing with, because I wanted to be able to speak with this. And I almost wish it, I hadn't looked this up, but it just gives me more reference to the fact that um, Statistically, if you're in a brain trauma coma, less than more than 30 days, you're, there's definitely going to be some permanent disability. If it's less than 30 days, it's like two thirds odds that you're going to have some permanent disability. And then they don't really talk about what are the odds statistically that you go through that and, and do a full recovery. And I, I love people that know me personally would say, Carter, you still haven't recovered. But, but, <laughs> but I've been very fortunate. I, I, and, Got to do a lot of cool things. I finished college and grad school, and then I used to manage the email systems for Anheuser Busch. Uh, and then, and now I started my own uh, company that I've been running for about four years. And and and, been, and along the way, I've, I've, I've tried to do as much as I can to work with as many organizations because I really feel like if it weren't for the people that helped me get through what I went through, I wouldn't be here. And so I've got to give back and help as many as I can. So with that, I'll say anybody that uh, has an organization, group meeting charity, whatever you need any support with, look me up. Uh, my buddy Dave Free says, Carter, you're the most photographed guy at Bush Stadium, really. <laughs> I said, I don't know, Dave, there's some pro athletes out there. Howard Pujols would probably, at, at the time, would have probably had more pictures taken than him. But anyway, uh, I'm easy to find. And so if you just Google Cardinal Cowboy, the first seven pages are me, mostly. <laughs> but, but it's just because I put so much out there, that's what I do for a living, and I want to help spread the word and, and, and try to encourage as many people as we can. So with that, I want to say thank you guys to, uh, especially Jim here for, Jim Fritz for inviting me to um, speak to you guys, and then I'll take any questions that you guys have. Um, How long ago was the accident? Uh, I was 19 years old. This is one of my standard jokes. Right? I was 19 years old, so this is five or six years ago. <laughs> but it was it was September 21st, 1991. 91. 91. So we're up to almost 20. And how long were you incapacitated? I'm sorry? How long were you incapacitated after, after the accident? Uh, well, I mean, 
we got a, a not counting now. But yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a your life is never the same, right? But uh, I would argue it took five years to really completely not completely. I mean, you're never to to get fundamentally back to where I was for the most part. I mean, it was really until last year. Um, I, I was a pretty good baseball player. You know, you don't the little award we got. You can't get that unless you're, you, you've done well and whatever. But um, but until I came back and played baseball. Many years, got on the semi-pro team that was the best ranked semi-pro team in the country, and then my buddy who started it tragically fell asleep at the wheel. And, but anyway, I mean, another uh, example. But um, uh, until last year, I still didn't play the way I used to. And I feel like it's, I say until last year because I came out, my buddies were like, dude, it's been six years since you last played. You were playing for 10 years straight in the semi-pro stuff that you did. But come out, we need a player. And I said, all right, I'll do this. I said, what did I do differently? before the accident than after the accident. And one of them was not put so much pressure on myself. Not to, to grip the bat as tight as I thought, because, man, I'm older, I need to hit more home runs. I'm 5'9", right? I'm a power, no, I'm not. So, so I, I changed the way I gripped the bat, and I said, just put the ball in play. And I led the league in batting average. I beat all the guys, a bunch of former semi-pro, a bunch of former pro, a bunch of former college guys, all in this league. I, I went 0 for 6 to start the season and finished at 523. And I was like, all right, now I'm back. So to answer your question, it took 24 years. But, but I mean, really, that's just a constant of evolution. And, and after the accident, I literally, my, I was determined, and they said, you need, to, you need to pull Carter out of college. You should not be going back to classes. But I refused, and I said, I'm going back to school. I'm going back to Central, away from my parents where they could look more closely take care of me. And one of the teachers said, you need to get a close eye on your son because he's not, he's not in good shape. When I would walk into class, and I'd have my buddy would walk me, to class. And so that's part of what you go through in one of these situations. Question? Mm -hmm. you, uh, you support a lot of organizations. Can you tell us about how, you know, what you do? Yeah. Good question, Jim. Um, I, uh, I've been very fortunate to, like I said, to survive. So I, I just reached out and started saying, hey, I'll work with this. And people kind of <coughs> recognize my story and, and become a little bit inspired or whatever. And that's what we're trying to do. But I'd say probably the. Can you guys hear me without them? Yeah. All right. yeah. Um, there's a long list. I mean, I, you'd have to go through the website. I've named the top 50. Once I got to 50, I stopped keeping track. But um, Make a Wish, uh, Little Patriots Embraced. Um, but I guess the, the answer, the real answer to the question is if there's anybody who's got an organization that just needs some kind of person to show up to, to enlighten and try to encourage. Look me up. I'll go visit any organization and uh, drive out of my way to get there. Sometimes I just say cover my expenses, you know, whichever, or, or give me a little donation to give back to one of the charities that help support me. But uh, I'm, I'm cheap. <laughs> but but I, but I'd like to. Ultimately, this is where I would like to take my life and speak. And so I would encourage anybody, please ask me to come speak whatever group. And if you watch some more of the videos we've got out there, you'll see more about what it is we do. And uh, look at the pictures we got. There. What kind of business are you in now? So, uh, yeah, I, I used to manage an email servers for a little brewery based out of St. Louis called Amazon Brew. A lot of people heard of them, right? But, uh, I, yeah, I, I was the corporate clustered email servers, and we used to blast out. I tie it to that because that's where it led me, where I'm at. We would send out 50 million emails through Budweiser.com. My email address was carter at Budweiser.com. I got one of the first emails created because they needed to track everything, and I was part of the team there. And then <clears throat> got laid off when InBev came in. <clears throat> so I said, I'm going to start my own company. I think I can do this stuff. While wow, starting your own business is a lot more work than I ever thought. But um, I do this new new marketing that a lot of people are familiar with. Has anybody heard of Google? Mm -hmm. heard of, kind of a new thing. It's catching on a little bit. But I do, I do Google advertising. Or I get into a whole lecture about, oh, don't do this and don't do that. And I'll, I'll tell you that. Come find me. Cardinalcowboy.com is you to find me. Or iWebProfit is my website, iWebProfit.com. But the biggest thing I'm doing now, and it's, and it's really developed out of my Cardinal Cowboy persona, is helping people understand the power you have with Facebook and, and your social media. Because now you don't have just a room, which is, it's, this is the best place to be, right? Right in front of a group of people. But you don't always have this ability. But you can reach a million people through social media now with a click of a button and, and, and disseminate your message. And so I help businesses, small businesses in particular, um, individual speakers, Poets, you name it. Anybody that wants to get found on the internet, that's what I help them figure out how to do it to use social media to do stuff. Can you tell us about your rings? Yeah, so um, these are the 
World Series and National League Championship rings from uh, our favorite team, the St. Louis Cardinals, right? And so I've decided to wear all the rings that they've given out or the ones I've got. A couple of these I got from the Cardinals from a couple of special sets that they have. Um, a couple of these were given to me. And I think these two, I think, are just the same replicas that most people have, but um, these are different. But anyway, ever since the Cardinals won the World Series, the last World Series they won since Cardinal Cowboy exists, but when was that? In the 80s. If I'm talking about the 82, right? Oh, yeah. That's the one that they won when I was I was 10 years old. That's when the Cardinal Cowboy got started. There's different radio stations that joke with me. Says we understand that the Cardinal Cowboy is 28, but we looked you up and you're 38. I'm like, well, the Cardinal Cowboy I started doing when I was 10. <laughs> and that, so we joke about what I do with the Cardinal stuff and that fun. But by now I'm working with some people very well associated with the, with the Cardinals and, and through some of the charity stuff that I've done. Um, and uh, really helping one particular person and, and uh, directly to get through. He, he was in a coma also, and to encourage him, and, and that'll be exciting. But that's why we wear the ring. So everything since 82, and that's 06, 13, 11, and 04, whether it's National League Championship 04 and 13, or World Series champions, okay. 6, 11, 82. There was another question somebody had. Okay. Well, we appreciate it. I think we have a little parting gift. I'm not sure what it is, but I guess we're just a little bell. Repl replica of a little bell. So I'll have to we'll give you that. Well, I guess I'll be appreciated. It was a great message. Jim, you might want to mention a little bit. Thank you very, very much. We have some connection with Afton High School, too. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned, um, my, sorry, my mom has been the drama teacher at Afton High School for 50-something years now, Judy Rethwish. You guys probably know her. This is her 50th. This is her 50th, okay. And uh, my claim to fame is through her. She doesn't even like to brag about much, but there's a little-known actor by the name of John Goodman yeah. who's from, Saint, from L.A., Lower Afton, I think. <laughs> and, and anyway, she made the argument, she won't talk about this, but uh, that she was a chief drama teacher there for 50 years, so she got to decide who got to lead. The, uh, the, the uh, music director said, look, he can't sing as well as so-and-so, he shouldn't get the lead. She said, I'm the director, he gets the lead, and the rest is history, right? So now, now you see John Goodman. All, how many movies has he been in? So these hundreds of stuff. But give it up for the guys at Afton over here in the group. This is an Afton High School Kiwanis Police. I'll tell my mom and maybe she'll step by and say hi to you guys. You guys she's still she's got her office now back behind stage, I think. Yeah. Some of these are in the play. Okay. But that's my mom. Has she done all right? John John's a winner. This is for the mud. Five one three. Five one three. There we go. I do a ton of trivia nights as the MC, so I learned you just read the last three numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys, again and again. And please look me up. Grab me from cardinalcowboy.com. Phone number's right on the website, and I'll come visit you guys. Thanks again. Thank you.